Honey family. This summer, my family and I planned a trip to the beach. It was a trip that would include me, my husband, and my two daughters, which at this season of our life, our, da our daughters are older, and so it makes it a little harder for everyone to be in line to get to go on a trip together which made for an extra special trip to the beach. Before I left, I got a special package in the mail. You see me here unpackaging it. This package came from my friend, Jean Oliver. Jean sent me this package in honor of her new book release, The Painted Art Journal. I met Jean several years ago via the web. She has been a huge inspiration and a mentor to me throughout my creative journey. She is one of the most authentic artists that I know. She is a wonderful wife, mother, artist, and the founder of Jean Oliver Network. I have mentored under many workshops that she has created, ones that are free on her network and ones that are paid. The summer that my Christian verse novel was released, I sent a copy to Jenny for her to review and re read herself. In the moments of her creating her studio that she has now on her property reminded me so much of the storyline I had written. It was so surreal watching her process just as my book had been released. It was like I was seeing my book in real life, in real time. Look at the beauty inside Jean's book. Stick around with me as I get ready to create a project out of this book. As I read it while I was on the beach, I found a favorite project that I wanted to create as soon as I got back home, and I want to take you along on the journey. Let's get started. Come along with me as I get ready to make a hand bound art journal. I found this project on page 32 and it's project four, hand binding a journal. Jenny goes into specific instructions for the things that you will need to make this journal. She goes over a list of items that you will need and a list of ideas to include in your hand bound journal. What excited me most about this project is I had never made an actual hand-bound art journal myself. I have always altered like old books. I've even altered one of my first books that I ever written to create it into a journal. But I had never put pieces of things that meant a lot to me as an artist together to bind an art journal. So I enjoyed the process of Jenny encouraging us to stay to our true self as an artist, to be authentically ourselves. And so as I thought about this process, I wanted to take a moment to really dive in deep, reflecting on who I am as an artist and look through the items that I use and normal art pieces of my own in order to be able to create pages for this art journal. This far, you've seen me gathering items such as a map, cork board, a screen, like actual window screen, denim, and lace. I'm going to gather a few more items and then I'm going to start the process of actually trimming each piece down to the size that I want my art journal to be. First, I'm going to think about the front and the back cover of the art journal. I'm going to use these cardboard pieces that I keep that are from the green tea that I drink. I've about decided that I'm going to use the cork board as my guide for how big the other pages in the art journal will be. So I'm doing a little measurement here, which ends up being very close to five by seven. And I'm going to tr trim the front and use a whole nother piece of cardboard to trim for the back cover. I thought that I could get both covers out of one, but 
it, it was just shy the size that I needed. I'm ready to go back through each piece that I'm going to include as pages in the art journal. I'm going to use the cork board as my guide for how big each page will be. This burlap I have had for many years. I bought a whole roll of it at Hancock one year whenever I was using burlap to make some other items. Found a really good price on it and incorporated in most all of my pieces of artwork. You may recognize this that I'm trimming now with the blue on it. It is from a cereal box. I've been known to recycle cereal boxes and use them to make postcards to send to friends and family. And this is an old tea bag that I had the packaging to it. I really don't make tea much too much anymore like this, but I, I used to love to keep those and incorporate them. This is wax paper I'm trimming now. I just like the way it feels and the transparency of it. And this is cardboard pieces that came between stones that we put on our back porch many a years ago. And this is a book page from a dictionary that I got at an antique mall. One of my favorite pieces is the black with white polka dots. Book page from Raider's Digest. Black texture page. An actual note card, the larger size. Composition page. Piece of gray corduroy from a pair of pants that I had a long time ago. A tag. I use these blank tags for a lot of things. I'll use them for tags for birthday gifts, art journals, or one year I even use them to make little tags for whenever I held an art auction for the Liver Cancer Foundation. Denim is something that I always keep on hand. Moving into the lace, I bought this lace and the one that I'm about to work with. I bought them at Hancock's when our local Hancock's was going out of business. I was actually in a season of making shirts of my own and wanted to incorporate some lace pieces in the shirts that I was making so that's why I have that on hand but I love to incorporate it in my work as well. I'm not sure at what point I decided to stop using the cork board as my guide but you see here I'm actually using just the cream piece of paper that I had measured out as well. So apparently along the way I changed my mind. This is window screen. I grew a love for using window screen one day whenever I was traveling down a main highway near my house and I kept seeing these window screens that were actually still intact that had come off of someone's windows. And in my mind I kept saying, oh the texture of those would be amazing. I would love to stop and pick those up and incorporate those in my work. Needless to say, I never stopped to pick them up. So one day, whenever I was at Lowe's, I stopped by the section that had screen and I found a roll of it on sale. So I purchased it and I use it pretty much in all of my work now. But that is just a small glimpse into how my mind works whenever it comes to creativity and where I get my inspiration and my ideas. I mean, I can just be traveling. I can get out of the car somewhere, you know, just different things. And I'm going to just grasp to the items that I like to collect. So this journal is going to completely identify me as an artist. The map pieces have always been something that I have been in love with. That map book actually came from a trip that me and my husband and my first child took many of years ago in like the year 2000. We went to Indiana to see my best friend there and back then GPS wasn't the thing so we used an actual physical map. In these last few moments you've noticed that I'm looking at 
additional sheets to put in there and there have been a few that I have turned away. Overall, I'm very pleased with my gathering process and ready to bind the journal now. I'm going to follow the step-by-step -step process in Jean's book. I'm going to start with my acrylic paper. I'm going to use it as the spine of the journal. So I'm setting the journal up here to kind of measure out the thickness that I think that the journal will be. So I will know how wide to cut. going to use my pencil to kind of gauge it here and actually whenever I cut this I'm going to have cut two pieces and I honestly didn't mean to but later on in my process I realized that I did need the second piece so if you're following along with this you may want to go ahead and cut two notice I stuck it back in there but later I'm going to realize I need it okay so I'm going to use the burlap as the pieces that's going to attach around the edges of the book spine. I'm just kind of measuring here. Trim that off a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Mod Podge to add that white piece of acrylic paper on the inside right there of the flat piece of burlap and that will be the inside of the book spine or the art journal spine and the size of the burlap I'm cutting is so the edges will wrap around the actual spine and go on a little bit of the front of the journal and a little bit of the back of the journal so I'm going to use Mod Podge there's all kinds of different adhesive that you can use but I always work with Mod Podge, so that's just what I chose to go with. I did go to the store and look at a couple of different things because I know Jean mentions in her book to use actual book compound. But in my craft stores, local craft stores, I couldn't find them. You can order it from Amazon, but I really I didn't want to order a whole thing of it. And I spoke with her and she was like, oh, you can even use Elmer's glue. So I was like, you know what? If I can use Elmer's glue, I can use Mod Podge. So that's what I chose to stick with. So see how I have taken the front and the back and laid it down on that piece of burlap. I'll move it over a little bit so you can see better. So I actually put Mod Podge on the burlap and spread it real good. But I think about it that I better put some on the actual cardboard itself. Since these are two heavy pieces of material, I really wanted to double up on the amount of Mod Podge that I put. Because I want, if I'm going to make this, I want it to be lasting, like years to come, that if my children are cleaning out my items and they come across my journal, I want, for the most part, it to still be intact. So there I have that piece, and I'm going to use my hair dryer to help speed up the process of the drying. So now I'm going to do the same exact thing for the back cover of the journal. I'm just trying to get it situated and then we'll apply my podge just like I did for the front. I was trying to line it up exactly so they would be in the same area as the front cover before I press down. And so I'm going to use my hair dryer a little more to speed up the, the process. 
cool story about this hair dryer. I had an extra hair dryer that was my kids or something one year and they needed a new one and so I was like there's nothing you know wrong with this one or whatever so I put it in my art studio. I know a lot of people use like the heat guns or I'm not even sure exactly what you call them. I never invested in one. I always use a hair dryer. This is not going to get all the way dry by using the hair dryer uh, just because I'm ready to move on with the process. But I will tell you that I should have laid a piece of wax paper under it in between the surface that I'm working on and the actual um, book cover because you're going to see later on it ends up drying and sticking to the surface. I'm just kind of looking through my pages and thinking about how we're fixing to get ready to actually start binding those into the art journal. I have to say that this is actually one of my favorite projects that I've done in a really long time because like I've mentioned earlier in the video, I've never made a hand bound art journal of my own. I usually do store-bought mixed media journals is what I like to use a lot or I've used other books that I've altered to use. In Jean's book she mentions to prop the ends of the journal up and so that way whenever you start putting pages in there you have a little you know leverage on the sides in order for everything to dry nice and neat. And so I kind of started noticing that I'm going to need something. So I use the hat. Well, I get on the hunt and I find even more. I had just bought a brand new pack of the cosmetic wedges. I have used these in my art studio for many of years. I use them all the time. A lot of times I will use them versus a paintbrush. But just getting into this project, I'm still kind of learning, you know, exactly where I need to be putting this Mod Podge and how much of it and what have you. So this piece here, that the page that I'm putting in now, I never went over earlier of uh, its story. One year for Christmas card, uh, it was my first year to not actually send out Christmas cards um, because the older that my children have gotten, things have just changed and we don't send out the same type of Christmas cards anymore. So long story short, I bought those envelopes thinking that I was going to be making the Christmas cards and I just really have a knack for the paper, uh, brown paper. And so I purchased like two packs of those things. I should have taken them back, but I never did. So anyway, whenever I was thinking about what pages I would use to make the journal, I was like, you know, I'm going to use one of those. And of course, it was over the size that I needed, but I trimmed it and thought it would be neat to kind of have something where you can stick stuff. So if you notice, I'm still kind of doing the same process here of putting the Mod Podge I'm not 100% sure how much I should be putting, but in the end, I can tell you it, it turned out right. But for each page, I do put a wedge, of a cosmetic makeup wedge in between there because for me, it helped the pages stay standing up for the drying process. Because once I get all of these in here, I'm going to leave it for an overnight dry. So pretty much for each page that I put in, I put a line of Mod Podge just on the edge of it, and I do it front and back. And then I use a, one of my fingers to kind of press, to give some firm pressure, to press it in place. It's a little tricky about this um, screen here. So I had to really 
work with it and make sure I got it in there really well. But as far as like putting the Mod Podge right on the edge, that is one thing that Jean mentions in her book is talking about making sure that you really do put your adhesive on the edge because if not, in the end, when everything dries, you're going to have pages stuck together. So that's another reason I chose to keep the pages as separate as possible with it being the screen and it was a little bent I decided I better go ahead and put a little heat to go ahead and speed that process up of getting it to stay in place the two objects that I'm using on either side of the book cover to prop them up are little uh, containers of paint that I, samples that I had picked up at Lowe's you can see that screen is just giving me fits it's it's uh, the actual metal screen and it's just it's really bent and curved over but I will tell you a lot of times whenever I work with the screen I do have some that's not the actual metal kind it's the softer material and I really like working with that especially on flat surfaces because you don't have all the bending and it's not hard and it doesn't poke you because man, you let those little edges, you know, get under your fingernail or poke your finger and it hurts. We are about to wrap up summer here. And tomorrow is my daughter's first soccer game on the high school team. So we're getting a little excited about that. A little sad about the summer coming to an end, but you know, it happens every summer. And as I tell my children, one year, one day in your life, you won't have summers. When you become adults, you just don't get them. And then my oldest child at the end of this week will be headed home for good from university. She graduated in May, but she still had an online class and a class at the physical campus to finish up that would completely complete her degree. And so we are waiting anxiously for her to arrive home. We went over the weekend and moved the rest of her items home in her room. So I just have that stuff sitting in her room for her to unpack when she gets home because I'm not sure where she wants everything. So I'm probably going to go ahead and speed up this process of this video just for you to see me finishing getting every page in there because the process for each page that's going in this journal is going to be the same.
If you notice there in the middle, there's still a gaping gap in the middle of the journal. And I realize I want to add a few more pages, so I've gone on a hunt to gather some. That first white page that I put in there was just a plain piece of white acrylic paper. And so now I'm going to scope out a couple more pages to add. So I found this brown one. It's textured like the black that I put in earlier in the journal. And I decided to put this little small piece of brown paper and I'm going to put several other small pieces of paper to kind of fill in this gap. That was a piece of a dictionary and a piece of a map. And then I feel like that the brown texture paper is going to fit in there just perfectly. I didn't want to put anything that was going to make what I had already chosen fell off. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about it. A few of the pages did not bend exactly how I would have liked for them to. You'll see here in a minute the lace kind of stuck. Watch this. That was kind of annoying, but you know, Jean even mentioned in her book to be careful of that kind of thing. And it, some areas just didn't work out good for me. But overall, I'm really excited about it. Now I'm ready to put the cord around it so I will have a way to keep the journal closed. This is one of the um, ladder steps that Jean talks about in this project in her book, starting with around step 11 and it goes all the way to 14. She uses a leather cord, but I'm going to use suede. It was just something that I had on hand so I'm measuring out the strip that I want to have that's going to cover the piece of suede once it's wrapped around and I put it into place. So this was my second piece of acrylic white paper. Remember, early, really, really early in the video, I cut, I thought I was cutting one piece and I actually cut two. Well, I learned later in the process that the second piece was really going to be handy. And so this is my second piece that I'm using here. In Jean's book, she uses a piece of canvas to actually create this piece and has actually some little detail, detail work in the canvas. But I'm going to keep mine a little simple and just use what I have on hand. And now I'm going to measure out how much of this suede that I'm going to need. And as Jean recommends, you want enough that's going to wrap around a few times so that whenever you're done creating um, in your journal or sketching or whatever that you're going to be doing in your journal, you want a good way to be able to close it up. And so I measured it to where I put the pieces around, I believe it was like three times and then I'm measuring it. So now I'm going to take it off and I've got my little end piece. And so I'm just going to snip it there. I, I didn't even measure how long that was. I just went with what looked good to me and then found the, you know, the, the end where I thought it was good and snipped it, snipped it from the roll. Um, that way, you know, it's kind of like working with shoelaces. 
and you just kind of work with it until you get it even to a length that you think is going to be good for your project. So I'm going to apply this here. I'm still working with Mod Podge. Uh, Jean mentions in her book to use like a hot glue gun for this step, but I just chose to stick with what I had. So I'm still going to work with the Mod Podge to get this in place. And now I'm ready to actually put this white piece of acrylic. And this is just kind of a decorative step to, you know, hide the piece of suede that's going to be there. And I just really try to put enough on there that this is going to be lasting. I even decided to put a little more. Get that nice in place the way that I like it, and then I'm gonna use the hair dryer on it a little bit to speed up the drying process. After I spent a little time drying it, I realized that I wanted to add a little extra Mod Podge in there for just a little extra support around the edges where I thought that it felt kind of loose. Because this is a piece that I really wanna make sure that does not come out of place long term. So I'm actually getting some from the top of the actual bottle of Mod Podge and sneaking it in there. I'm going to do some around on the other side as well. Making sure that it's nice and dry before I actually wrap the rest of the cord around. So once I felt very comfortable with how dry it was, I was able to wrap it that way. Wrap it. Ooh, it fell over. Wrap it a time like that. And then wrap it back one more time. And then once I get there, that's where the tie is going to be. Just like tying your shoestrings. To have made it easier you could you know prop something on the edges to hold the journal up so you can get it tied if you need one side was a little longer than the other so I snipped that but as time goes on and you're working in your journal your the journal is going to get thick so actually like once I get this tied the strings are actually a little longer than I won't, but I know over time, whenever I'm working in the journal, the length of the strings will actually be good. I'm so excited to have finished this project with you. If you would like to get a copy of Jean's book, The Painted Art Journal, you can visit her website at jeanoliver.com. She has a shop on there where you can purchase a copy, or you can visit your local bookstores, like Barnes & Noble, and also you can check Amazon, but I know at one point copies on Amazon had been sold out, so I don't know if it has been restocked or not. 